All right, this is number five from the 2012 AP Physics B exam, and it is a circuits problem. We've got the circuit given here. Uh, it's a little bit up. There we go. 24 volt battery supply, a uh, couple parallel branches in series with each other, a couple reference points, and they're all lamps with given resistances. And we want to know the average potential energy change of an electron as it goes from point Z to point X. And I know a lot of folks are like, what do you mean average potential energy change? This is, this is a circuit, it's not electrostatics, but it still works. And so to explain that, we need to go through a bunch of stuff. If we start off as an electron, chilling right here, we need to first decide, decide, does this electron want to go to X or does it want to go away from X? Now I know conventional current goes positive to negative. But remember, conventional current is the direction in which positive charge would flow. This is negative. Electrons always want to seek out high potential. So it is actually going to go towards X. Let's get a voluntarily go towards X. Keep that in mind as I go to explain the rest of this problem. Or I guess another way of thinking about it is electrons have high potential energy when they're near low potential. And they have low potential energy when they're near high potential. And X is definitely higher potential. Let's first look at our equation. Electric potential is work over charge. And I like to kind of ignore negative symbols for now and think it through after in terms of that logic I just gave. So for now, I'm going to first figure out work because that is the potential energy. And that's going to be the voltage change. So the vo voltage change from Z to X, you can write delta V if you want, times the charge of the electron. And if we're going from the lowest terminal to the highest terminal, we're experiencing 24 volt change. 24 times the charge of one electron, which is one elementary charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. You're going to get a numerical value, a magnitude, I'll say, no, no sign is given yet, of 3.8 times 10 to the 18 joules. Ooh, not negative 18, just 10 to the positive, or no, it is negative 18 joules. This is the energy, the energy change. And I guess my question is, is the potential energy increasing or decreasing? We already said it. It's decreasing. It's going closer to where it wants to go. So it's losing potential energy. That means the average potential energy change has got to be negative. It's going to lose that energy. And that is my answer. I basically just answered number two as well. Do the electrons gain or lose potential energy? Well, they're losing potential energy. I've already explained. I'm not going to explain it again. B, what is the equivalent resistance of the circuit? To determine equivalent resistance, you resolve parallel branches first, and then within parallel branches, you need to resolve series circuit, series branches. Uh, but I notice I have two parallel branches, and there's nothing in series within them. So what I want to do is find the equivalent resistance for this branch, the equivalent resistance for this branch, and then I'll realize I have two that are in series, and then I'll find my overall equivalent. So I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, we'll call this parallel branch 1, or maybe just R1. So 1 over R1 must equal 1 over RA plus 1 over RB. They're parallel, so we got to do the fraction stuff. So it's 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 which is 3 sixths, but that's of course 1 over R, we need to invert that, so my first branch is going to be 2 ohms. So I could replace those with a 2 ohm resistor and it would get the same, same job. The second branch, R2, will be 1 over 12 ohms plus 1 over 24 ohms, which is 3 over 24 ohms, which means R2, the inverse of that, is going to be 8 ohms. Again, that would mean I could replace this entire branch with one resistor of 8 ohms. Now these two branches are in series with each other to show that my overall REQ is going to be R1 plus R2, which is simply 2 ohms plus 8 ohms or 10 ohms. We have an equivalent resistance of 10 ohms. C. Calculate the magnitude of the current through point Y. So how much current is right here? I'm going to erase everything, but I do want to keep the numbers in mind, meaning my parallel branch 1 is 2 ohms, my second parallel branch is 8 ohms, 
my equivalent R is 10 ohms. It's going to come into play in a minute. So how much current is going through Y? Well, to know the current through this spot here, I need to know both the V and the R at that spot. Well, I only know the R. I don't know the voltage. But I do know my total voltage, and I do know my total resistance. So what I want to say, if V equals IR, I total must be V total over R equivalent. Or 24 volts divided by 10 ohms. I know I have a total current of 2.4 amps. That means 2.4 amps have to enter this junction. Some will go towards resistor B, some will go towards resistor A, and all of it will reconvene right here in the middle and then do the same thing. I'll split again for C and D. That means over this entire branch there's 2.4 amps. Well, we know the equivalent resistance for that branch. Therefore, we can figure out my voltage through the first branch is I through the first branch times my equivalent resistance of the first branch. Or 2.4 amps times 2 ohms. I have an equivalent, or not equivalent, a voltage drop over this entire first parallel branch of 4.8 volts. Now, if I recall, the voltage drop over parallel branch, so VA and VB, must be equal to each other as well as the overall drop over the entire branch. Therefore, V1 is this, but so isn't VA and VB. Now I know the voltage and the resistance at B. Therefore, my current through branch B, which is going to be my answer for C1, must be my voltage through branch B divided by my resistance of B. Therefore, it's 4.8 volts divided that by 3 ohms. And that is, what, 1.6, I believe, if I'm doing my mental math correctly. Let me just confirm. Yes, 1.6 amps. And that is my answer. I could figure out my current through A as well, as long as I take the 2.4 and subtract it. So there's 0.8 amps going through resistor A. C2, indicating the diagram the direction of the current through point Y. Well, I already kind of did this. It's going to be uh, to the right, because remember, current flows, conventional current goes positive to negative. And this was here to kind of test to make sure you didn't mix that up, because that whole electron stuff up top here. Current is positive and negative, so it has to flow like so, all the way around the circuit. D, calculate the energy dissipated in the 12 ohm bulb in five seconds. Well, there's a ton of equations for energy. Remember, energy is work, which is power times time, and power is IV, which is also I squared R, which is also V squared over R. Any of these work, as long as I then multiply them by time, I'll know my energy. I know my R, so I'm going to use one of these two. I can go through a long process to find my current, or I can go through the easy process to finding voltage, and that's what I'm going to do. I know there's 4.8 volts that drop over the top branch. I know I have 24 volts total. That must mean over both VC and VD, so VC will equal VD, it's going to be 24 minus 4.8, which is what, 19.2? 2 volts. That means that there's 19.2 voltage drop over branch C. So I can use this last version to find that my work is going to be V squared over R times time or 19.2 squared, that entire quantity divided by 12 and all of that times the time of 5 seconds. And you will get an overall energy in joules of 154 joules. And E. We're going to rank the bulbs with 1 being the brightest and 4 being the weakest. And if they have the same ranking, then they're going to equal the same number. So which ones will be the brightest? Well, the best way of thinking about it is which ones have the most current flowing through them. Uh, and it, it, resistance comes into play here, but for this it should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to erase a lot of this stuff up here so we can kind of see what's going on. Um, 
we've got total current up here, uh, which was that 2.4 amps. That current then diverts, and then diverts again, etc. right? Now this bottom branch, it's going to experience the greatest amount of energy. Because it's not really just current. If we want to think about brightness, I think we should think about power. Power is I squared R. This entire bottom branch will have the same total current flowing through it as the top branch does. But this bottom branch will consume more energy because it has an overall greater equivalent resistance. Remember, this was 8 ohms of equivalent resistance. That means by default, C and D combined will have more power than A and B combined. Which means one of these two is going to be the brightest. Now that you know one of these two is the brightest, we're now going to refer to the one that has the greatest current flowing through it. Because current is more of a factor than resistance. 12 ohm resistor will have more current flowing through it. It's got the lowest resistance, so more current will flow through it. So C is definitely the brightest. D is definitely the next brightest. Now we've got to look at bulbs A and B. They're the next set of the bright, bright bulbs. And once again, we're going to use the same logic. The one with the lowest resistance will have the most current flowing through it. Therefore, th the 3 ohm resistor will be brighter than the 6 ohm resistor. So bulb B is the third brightest, and then finally bulb A being the most dim. All right, that's it for your circuits question number five, the 2002 exam. Thank